Welcome to the tutorial series for Fargo Rate's League Management System. I'm Steve Ernst with Fargo Rate, and I'll be your guide as we take a look at modifying an existing division within LMS. In this video, you're going to learn how to change the teams that are in a division, adjust team rosters, and uh, do things like add and remove locations from the division. We're going to cover all of this, and by the time we get to the end, you'll be able to keep up with any changes that you need to make to your division. All right, let's get started. Most of the changes that you'll be making to an active division will be things like adding late teams, adding players to rosters, uh, things of that nature. And all of those are accessed in the same location in LMS, and that is through the Teams, Players, and Locations button, which is in the upper right-hand corner. So by clicking on that, it will take us to that page for our division. And this, this page is, is organized into three sections. There's the Teams tab, the Players tab, and the Locations tab. So let's start with the Teams tab. From here, we can see that we have five active teams and a buy team. And then we can make modifications to this. Um, just like we saw when we were setting up the division, we can click the Edit button and we can change the names of teams, for example, say this team decided to no longer be called Team A and it's going to be those guys, we could change the location that they were at or in if, if we so choose. So we'll hit OK there and we can see that their name did change to those guys. We can also do things here like add players to a roster. So we can go to add player and again this is going to look very familiar to those who have been through the first video in creating a division. So this this dialog works exactly this this in a, in the same way. So we can search for four players and let's say we're going to add this test player 2 to this particular division. And I can see that their number of players had just went from 2 to 3. But if I want to see who they are, I can click on that row and it will show me and likewise, I can actually remove players from a team through here as well. With one caveat, you cannot remove a player from a team if they've already played a match. That should just kind of make sense. They already have you know, match data towards that team, and so you can't remove them. Uh, click on the row again, and it collapses. So let's say that we had a late ad. We have a team that came in and we need to get them on to this division. So in this particular case, I have a buy team up here. So that buy team is already in the schedule. So I could just edit this and I could say that this is the latecomers. And I want them to play out of location A and they're no longer a buy placeholder. This means this is a real team and it should show up in the standings. So we'll hit OK. And there we go. So we've just added a new team. Now, if you, if you already had an even number of teams, you can still add a team and you do that through the plus button in the bottom right corner. So we click the, bu the plus button and through here we can add a new team or a new location and we're gonna add a new team. So we do that and we'll call it the even later comers and they're gonna play out of location B. Hit okay. And now we have an odd number of teams. So we would actually have to go and create a buy in order for everything to still work out here. So we'll create the buy team and they're going to play out of our buy location and it's a placeholder. Okay, so now we're back to an even number of teams and this is going to become more significant when we actually generate a new schedule for this particular division and we're going to cover that in the schedule video. So if I want to see all of the players that are on the team rosters, I can go to the players tab. And I only have three players on here right now. But I can see what their current Fargo ratings are. I can see how many games they have in the system. That's our robustness. And I can also see what their starter or seed rating is. 
And as an operator, I can actually change the seed rating up to the point where the player has 200 games. After 200 games, the seed or the starter rating um, has no effect. So I can click the edit button here and I could, if this player had an email address that they just gave me, or if I wanted to change the starter rating to say 500, I can make those changes right from this screen. If I want to see all the information that has happened with this player, like the their rating history, things like that, I can click on the history button. And for this particular player, I can see their rating every day has remained relatively the same. And I can go back through all of the records that are for this player back through time. Then we have the locations tab. And this one you probably won't have to use very much, but you can imagine a case where um, a bar decides they're going to restructure and instead of having six tables, they're only gonna have four. So we can click edit and we could change the number of nine footers they have to be four and hit okay. So that's basically it. It's going to become more important when you watch the schedule video, which will be the next one in our series, and show that when you make changes like this and you need to regenerate the schedule, it is very straightforward. Okay, well, thanks for listening. That is the Teams, Players, and Locations tab and those changes that um, you need to make from that screen. I welcome you to watch the next video in the series um, where we take a deep dive into generating more detailed schedules for divisions. Okay, thank you.